Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Keisha and I just wanted to give you guys a quick video on pretty much having a baby after a tummy tuck and I can cover some points on how I went about my pregnancy, how the pregnancy and labor went. It's kind of going to be a lot of information packed into one but I'm going to try to keep it short and simple, right to the point and very informative all at the same time. So to keep things simple, Obviously, I was pregnant. I went into labor when I was 40 weeks and five days. So my water actually broke naturally. I ended up being in pre-labor for 24 hours. I had to go to the hospital around 12 hours after my water broke. I had a midwife and a doula and they wanted to monitor myself and the baby just to make sure that everything was progressing well and that you know I can continue with the labor as planned. Okay, so long story short, I had gone the 24 hours with my water being broken and I wasn't dilating past three centimeters. And at that point, I was starting to get obviously frustrated, stressed, I actually cried, it wasn't going according to planned and I was starting to get really, really nervous about if I was gonna end up having a C-section because as you know, they're really on top of you when you had a c-section before and they usually don't want things to go past a certain time if things aren't progressing they like to intervene and I had to have my birth at a hospital not that I had to but I just preferred to because obviously it's a lot safer that way so at that time because I wasn't going past three centimeters they wanted to induce me with a drug called oxytocin now I had been induced with pitocin before with my son I was induced with pitocin I ended up having a caesarean with him my daughter, I was induced with a Foley catheter and I ended up going into labor after that and having her with no other issues. I had a vaginal birth with her. So this time around when I heard about oxytocin, I really wasn't too sure. I know a few things about oxytocin, like it's something that occurs naturally in your body and everything else. But the only thing that was making me not want to do it is one, it wasn't a part of my plan. I wanted to go 100% natural. I was dealing with my contractions perfectly fine on my own. But the fact that they weren't strong enough and the baby wasn't coming down hard enough for my cervix to open up more and for my cervix to thin out as well, they wanted to get something going to make it a lot stronger. So after a long talk <laughs> with multiple midwives, doctors, nurses, I ended up going with the oxytocin along with an epidural because if you guys have ever been induced before or if you're going to get induced, I'm just telling you the truth right now, whenever you're induced with a synthetic drug, it is extremely painful and exhausting. Being in labor for 24 hours period is exhausting and that's where I was at that point. I was exhausted and the fact that I was going to be taking the oxytocin would have made the contractions come harder, it would have made me a lot more exhausted and the epidural was probably the only way I would have got any rest to regain my energy to have the baby. So literally an hour after they gave me the oxytocin, I had the baby. Within about four pushes, she was out and that was it. And honestly, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Obviously it's way better than having that than the cesarean with the advice of my midwives and everyone around me it was the best move to make and I'm glad that I did it so that's kind of the birth story in a nutshell for you guys and I just want to let you guys know some things that I did to help prepare myself to have a baby one as a VBAC having a previous c-section and two after having a tummy tuck so I'll do the VBAC part first. Honestly, I've had a VBAC with my previous pregnancy, my daughter. Oh, baby's crying, one second. Okay, baby peek. Here she is. <laughs> I'm just talking to the people. You wanna hear me talk? Okay, so some things that I did to prepare myself for a vaginal birth after cesarean. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of looking up things online, to be honest with you. Google has everything. Google has people that have their testimonials on how they achieved their VBAC after cesarean. And it's all about like knowing yourself and it also depends on your situation. Some people, unfortunately, when they go into labor, they don't dilate at all. That wasn't the case for me, so I knew kind of which route to take. Look up which hospitals have high cesarean rates. A lot of the time, when you go to a doctor and they kind of try to push a cesarean on you, chances are it's a hospital that has high cesarean rates. And I'll tell you guys right off the bat, I just found this out recently, they get paid a lot more to have a cesarean birth than a regular birth. 
And as much as you think that they care about your health, a lot of doctors do, a lot of nurses do, but some of them don't care. All they care about is the bag they're securing. It's your birth, it's your labor, it's your body. Be proactive and figure out what it is that you need to do to have the highest chance of having a vaginal birth after C-section. If you happen to be in a situation where you're going to be induced, make sure you're looking up ways you can be induced naturally. There are tons of old wife tales on how to start your labor naturally. Or if you do happen to have the last resort of going to the hospital, what are some natural medical ways you can be induced? With the oxytocin that I was induced with, you can choose different levels of it. So they can start you off very minimal, and if it's working, they can increase it very gradually. So like I said, do your research, look up different ways on how you can have a vaginal after C-section, and also make sure that you're physically fit for it. Make sure that you're in the best of health, make sure that you're eating healthy. A lot of times when you're pregnant, they say, oh, you're eating for two. Um, you're really not, you're just having a couple extra calories, a couple hundred extra calories. You're not really eating for two. Don't go ham and go start having two Big Macs and two cheeseburgers and two fries and two drinks when really you don't need to eat that much, right? You don't need to eat that much. You eat to satisfy your hunger, snack frequently, keep yourself hydrated because once you get around like 30 weeks, you're not gonna have that much space for food anyways. So don't overdo it by eating junk or thinking that you're eating for multiple people when it's really just you and a growing baby. Well, as you guys might not know, when a baby is born, the baby's stomach is literally like the size of a pea or something like that. Yes, the baby's getting the nutrients, but you're not physically filling the baby's belly. Another way that you can prepare for a VBAC is to have a doula. A doula is somebody that assists you throughout your whole labor. They're with you by your side 24 seven from the time your labor starts until the baby arrives. And the reason why that's so important is because when you go into labor at a hospital, you have nurses and you have doctors, but they're constantly in and out. They have who knows how many other patients and they're literally making their rounds around the hospital, checking on you and then coming back in a few hours. Same thing with the doctor. You'll meet the doctor probably once your labor begins and when the pushing starts. That's literally the only time you're gonna see the doctor. So having a doula, they're very knowledgeable on what stage you are in labor, how to help you cope with contractions. It's literally like your personal assistant during labor, other than your significant other or whoever else is going to be your laboring partner. And then the other things during your pregnancy obviously apply. Trying to be active as much as you can. You don't have to go to the gym. You can take walks. If it's winter time, you can make rounds around the mall. Maybe walk around the mall a couple times. Try to do squats. It's really good to help widen your pelvis before you give birth as well. All right, guys. So I've had a lot of people ask me what it's like having a baby after you've had a tummy tuck. And to be honest, it really depends on the person. I can sit here and tell you guys my personal experience but everybody's different so for me personally my results have not been messed up at all I actually bounced back a lot faster than I thought I would and obviously people will say oh well you had surgery so obviously you're gonna bounce back well that's not true for everybody for me I know I was keeping active I was walking a lot not the whole time obviously I was sick for a few months during my pregnancy but when I felt good I was walking a lot whether it was in the mall around my neighborhood sometimes we would drive to a park and walk for an hour keeping hydrated eating healthy making sure you're not gaining excessive weight for no reason when I first went to my doctor about the pregnancy I had told her I had a previous surgery to correct my muscles and I got rid of some extra skin as well she told me what was the minimum and maximum I should gain during the pregnancy and I believe it was somewhere around 15 to 25 pounds based off of my current weight at the time and also based on everything that's gonna happen during the pregnancy, how much the baby will put on, how much I'm gonna put on, whether that's through my breast gaining weight, the placenta, everything. So talk to your doctor about that. They're definitely gonna have some good guidelines for you to follow. If you go over it, obviously that's completely fine. What matters the most is that you're staying at a healthy place for you and your baby, but like I said, anything excessive is just unnecessary. Some things that I would keep in mind if you're pregnant after a tummy tuck. Number one, do not lift any
anything heavier than what you're comfortable with. I don't even know what weight to put out there, but if you think it's gonna be too heavy, don't lift it. Don't even attempt to do it because one, you have a baby that's putting pressure on your abdominal muscles as it is already. And then on top of that, when you go to lift heavy things, you're kind of flexing your muscles in a way but because you have pressure going against it, you have the chance of pushing those muscles open and that's something you don't want to happen. So definitely do not lift anything heavy. Keep the lifting to a minimal. Even when it comes to bending down and getting stuff, instead of bending forward to get stuff, squat down to pick things up. Squatting is great for being pregnant. As everybody knows, it helps widen your pelvis. It's good for your pelvic floor muscles. So if you do have to pick up something off the ground, squat down and do it. Don't lean over and put the weight of the baby onto your abdominal muscles by leaning forward like this. Some tips for after you have the baby. Definitely stay hydrated, drink as much water as possible. Drinking lots of water is definitely good for recovery. One thing that you definitely shouldn't do is eat really cold food. You guys can look it up yourselves. There's many benefits to keeping anything that you put in your body after having a baby at room temperature and above. So anything cold drink wise or food wise is a big no. Also something that I did as well is I did some belly binding after I came home from the hospital. So I think around the fourth day I started wrapping my stomach. I have a Kaor belly belt or whatever you call it. There's many out there you guys can look it up. It doesn't have to be something specific but definitely bind your stomach to help keep everything in place especially during those early days where it kind of feels like things are kind of shifting around and it also just kind of helps give you support for your stomach and your back as you're recovering. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick glimpse of how I look now after I've had the baby. This is having the baby after a tummy tuck and the tummy tuck was too Two years ago so this is three weeks after having the baby I'm not flexing my muscles or anything face forward here's me again so you can see I have a tiny bit it's sticking out a little bit but it's not that bad honestly all right so that's it for this video I hope I covered as many topics and questions you guys may have had if I happen to miss your question or if there's something you're still curious about that I didn't happen to cover in this video feel free to leave it in the comments down below I'll try my best to answer as many questions as possible and leave the thumbs up on this video if I helped you out in any way if you love this video or if you just missed me in general look forward to many baby updates with me and baby Kira right are we gonna be updating them so look forward to many updates with me and Kira all right somebody's hungry I'm gonna get off to feeding the baby I am breastfeeding for anybody that wants to know so I tried to get this video as informative short and sweet as possible but also covering many topics that you guys want to know about so thank you guys for watching this video I'll see you in the next one bye guys